It's been a few days since we've talked about the Nintendo Switch 2, and a lot of that is just because, hey, there really wasn't anything going on. Uh, and you guys, contrary to popular belief, we don't actually talk about Nintendo Switch 2 every day. In fact, five of our last eight videos had nothing to do with Nintendo Switch 2. But that does mean that we're a little bit overdue at this channel, since we do tend to talk about it most days. And today we are talking about it because there is some new leaks out there some new connections some new rumors i guess if you want to put it that way uh out there that support a couple of things with nintendo switch 2 that we haven't really talked about enough uh, one of that is the name of the platform and the other part has to do with a certain aesthetic of the platform that just got more evidence and before i dive into all of that i want to make sure i give andres restart a lot of credit he did a lot of the leg work on this stuff so i want to make sure that friend of the channel andres restart is given full credit i'll have a link down to his video it's the number one source uh for this video but we'll have links to the individual sources as well uh and the first thing we got to talk about is the color button theory if you guys remember the color button theory goes way 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 back we had a bunch of games out of nowhere in 2023 third party games starting to put colored button a b x y icons in their games and these colors were coordinating with the same color scheme as the super famicom slash super nintendo right that color scheme that nintendo has used in the past and has used it in advertising and marketing and they've brought it back in other ways on other consoles and like the 3d new 3ds or something had it so yeah it's quite interesting but nintendo hasn't used it the entire switch generation and there's no new iteration of switch or no new joy cons that are using it so uh, it was just interesting to note that third parties were starting to do it and the theory at the time was those third parties might have dev kits for switch 2 and they're actually developing this game for both switch and switch 2 and they're just unifying the button colors and it was really fascinating too because when you consider some of those third party games were obviously on xbox and PlayStation, and they didn't have color buttons there. So it was definitely Nintendo specific, not just game specific. So that led to a lot of theories about, hey, maybe they're working on a Switch 2 version of the game that uses these buttons, and they just unified development. And that could make sense. Uh, but then Nintendo started doing it, right? We saw it in things like Super Mario RPG, and then more recently we saw it in, well, how about Mario Party Thousand Year Door? Uh, that was another one as well. But see, both of those were older games. So if people wanted to think about, well, they're both Mario games, they're both Mario spin-offs, they're also older games, does it really mean much? Well, yes, because now something else has happened. Something else has come forward that isn't Mario, was definitely a brand new game, and uses the color buttons. Of course, we're talking about something we learned about in the Terra Leak. Now, I want to know, we can't really show any images or stuff from the Terra Leak. In fact, Nintendo has been going after everything really strong. I wanted to talk about, originally today, one of my first videos was going to be about the NSO. It's been data mined, but Nintendo's even going hard after those videos. They left my last one alone because it was just Echoes of Wisdom gameplay with me talking, but uh, I'd rather save that stuff for the podcast. I think it'll be more... Uh, appropriate at that time to talk about it. Plus, the app will have been launched at that point, so people will have actually played it. So we'll leave it at that. We're not going to rely on the data mine for it. But what I want to dive into here in this Terra Leak is this blurred image that was provided by Andres Restart. And this image shows something from a game. Now, you're noticing, obviously, the color buttons. That's what we're focused on. But where does this come from? Well, there was a multiplayer Pokemon game we found out in development called Pokemon Rodeo that's been canceled or seemingly canceled. It's possible it's been re rebooted as codename Pokemon Synapse, and that's also some sort of multiplayer Pokemon game. There's even footage of it out there. We're not going to dive into that part, but uh, these colored buttons are there, and this brings up the idea that the color button theory could have some merit, because this was going to be a brand new game, not a remake or remaster, and the color buttons are a little different. Uh, if you noticed, the B and X swapped colors from well, the SNES color scheme. It's the same color scheme. Now they're just in different orders. And, and I guess the only theory I have here is, one, it could be a mistake, of course. They they might have just messed up, and, and this was a game that isn't out or is canceled or is still in development, and so they might put it back to the Super Nintendo uh, way of doing it. Or it could just be that A and B are your primary buttons that you use in almost every single game. X and Y aren't always used or aren't always used frequently. So with A and B being your primary buttons, it would make sense to go with the two primary colors out of the four colors they use. Because remember, they use what green, yellow, uh, blue, and red. We'll put your blue and red uh, on your A and B and call it a day. So that could be really the 
uh, big theory there that kind of makes it all go together. Uh, I don't obviously know if this really has anything to do with the Switch shoe. It would help differentiate the system. I think if you're looking at a Switch shoe next to a Switch OLED outside of the screens looking different, you know, you want to see them look different. They could have more rounded Joy-Cons and, and a beefier system and uh, a bigger screen. But in the end, having the controllers have that physical difference with the colors, whether it's just on the lettering or it's on the full buttons, I do think would be something that would help it stand out. Uh, maybe it looks a little too kiddish to do that. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's why they, they, they use black buttons, but then they go with colored letters. But but whatever the case might be, it is something Nintendo has dabbled with in the past. Again, literally back in the 3DS era, they had versions of the 3DS with it. So I think there is a higher than not likelihood that this actually means something and is worth paying attention to. And it just adds more evidence to the idea of that color button theory. I mean, we've got to still call it a theory because we can't directly tie any of this to switch to uh, without doing mental gymnastics. Also, there's nothing in the shipping data or anything else that indicates any sort of colors. So we're gonna leave it like that, but there's actually more we need to get into because you guys remember, we talked about this image by Nin Spider and a lot of people laughed at it. In fact, uh, the video actually has a very uh, poor, for my channel anyways, like the dislike ratio because a lot of people just assume that Nin Spider is a joke and that this is such rudimentary poor art skills that a five-year-old could have drawn in. I, I, would, I would tell you right now, my kids, they're not five anymore, but uh, they're a little older. You know, we got a, a, a nine, 11 and a 13 year old. They can all draw better than this. I'm not going to sit here and uh, yank your chain. They could draw better than this, but uh, I tried drawing this stuff myself in uh, MS Paint with a mouse, and it was actually worse looking than this. Then I tried drawing it just quickly, like, a, you know, trying to do a crude drawing, uh, trying to make these exact drawings over on my whiteboard. And, yeah, they looked a pretty similar. So I, I'm not going to sit here saying an adult couldn't have drawn these. Uh, again, crude drawings, super quick. Uh, yeah, adults can be just as sloppy as kids. But here's the thing. It's not about the quality of the drawings. It's why people think NinSpider is correct, because this actually connects to something else that has to do with the name of the system. So NinSpider is the earliest known person on the internet to mention a magnetic connection between the new Joy-Cons on Switch 2 and the Switch 2 console. Now, the last time we talked about stuff was all the way back in April, and this was before the MOBA pad information came out and all the accessory manufacturers started talking about it. Nin Spider talked about the magnet connection between the, the, the controllers and the console long before they did. And here's the thing, that's pretty much the main thing that we could draw to him, and he hasn't said a whole lot on family boards, but later we got shipping data that confirmed the magnetic connection going on. And then also on top of that, we can kind of sort of figure out that it looks like there's some sort of magnet thing going on when we had the prototype leaks as well. So he essentially has that aspect of what he said confirmed. And that's the biggest thing to have confirmed because that's what he was the originating source on the internet for. And we didn't cover it back when he said it because he was just a no name, but now you got to pay attention because he was right. And here's the thing. He didn't come back and start gloating when it was discovered he was correct uh, at all. In fact, he just stayed away this entire time until he put up this image. And again, he hasn't been back since he put up this image either. Now, if you think about the name Nin, Nin Spider, uh, it's very close to Nintendo Insider. Nin Spider, Nintendo Insider. I think you can get the inference. So it's possible that this is just a new insider on the block that just comes when they have information, drops it, then leaves. And that's it. Uh, and if we consider that, and we consider that the dimensions uh, and, and, and the way the dock is drawn sort of matches some of the stuff that's in the leaked shipping data, then I think we have to consider that U shape on the back of that console. Now, I'm not here to debate the merits of that U shape versus the Switch OLED kickstand. I think we all pretty much love the Switch OLED kickstand. We'd like to see something like that continued on Switch 2. But you can understand why Nintendo would want an aesthetic difference just to make the system look different, you know, be different just to be different. And uh, as if Nintendo hasn't done that before. Well, here's the thing. That's not the first time we've heard about a U shaped kickstand design there was actually a leak out of china from a chinese forum from a, uh, someone who claimed to be in manufacturing and provided credentials that they were in manufacturing of course now all their posts have been deleted by the moderators of that forum supposedly to protect the user because uh he gave exact credentials on like what factory he worked in and 
Yeah, could probably cost himself a job potentially there. But what I will note is that there was some stuff available in this U-shaped kickstand design leak. Most of the stuff we're going to kind of leave alone because we're not really sure on some of it. But one of the things that he did mention was on the back of the switch. So you had your U-shaped kickstand. Then you also had a switch logo with a giant two next to it. Basically stating that Nintendo Switch system is called Nintendo Switch 2. And the funny thing is, we heard about this, obviously, again, coming from, well, someone that I think we should be paying attention to, called Dr. Circuntota, who put up this tweet that's just as a quote, in quotes, Switch 2. And on the surface, a lot of people wanted to dismiss this as well and call it a bunch of fake garbage. Like we're just, we could tweet out anything and people, any analyst says anything, we could just go ahead and say it's a leak. But here's the thing, Dr. Circuntoto doesn't work in those ways. If you actually pay attention to his Twitter account and you follow his tweets, yeah, he's the CEO of Cotton Games. Yes, he's invested in Nintendo and is at the investors meetings. That's all true. And yes, it's also true that he has gone out and made predictions and estimates and used, you know, analyzed and making guesses for investors, you know, on the future of Nintendo and been wrong about some of that stuff. But when you pay attention to what he does on Twitter, he doesn't do any of that. He's not sitting there putting on his guesses and his estimations on Twitter. And why would he? He gets paid to do that stuff. He's not going to do it just freely there. He actually just talks about the game industry or is replying to people, except when he drops these weird cryptic tweets and then never talks about them again. And we talked about how he's done it two other times, ZR 2023 and then Z2 2022. And both of those tweets have been deleted. And again, he's never referenced them again. He didn't respond to anyone or like anyone that responded or quote tweeted those. He just let things happen, then deleted the tweets. Here he is again with Switch 2. And again, he's not responding to anyone. He's not, uh, you know, referencing it in any of his business stuff. When people ask him questions, he just leaves it alone. He basically pretends he never put the tweet out at all, which is exactly what he did with those two prior tweets. Then something got announced and he deleted the tweets. And those things got announced within two weeks. So that gets back to obviously the expectation that Switch 2 could be revealed this week, next week, or, you know, right up until November 5th. But I don't know. We'll see if that's the case. This video isn't actually about reveal timing. It's about the name. But it's just to bring up the fact that he's saying, you know, Switch 2 in quotes. We have this Chinese leak that claims that there is a, you know, design on the back uh, that has a Switch logo with a 2 next to it. And then... You have this thing from NinSpider, who has already gotten something right about Switch 2, provable as a fact, dropping this crude image that has the U-shaped kickstand that matches up with that Chinese leak. So I, it's starting to really feel like Nintendo Switch 2 is the actual name of the system. At least that's what I'm, I'm leaning towards right now. Now, some people have asked me if I do still think Switch 2 could be revealed this week. I said last week I had a bad feeling about this week. I still have a bad feeling about this week. I actually have a better feeling about next week. And you might go, but it's Halloween. I know it's Halloween, but Nintendo has nothing going on next week. This week they have the NSO stuff. You can argue their partner, you know, Sony is, is really seeing our Lego Horizons. Uh, I, again, I kind of think that this week maybe doesn't work as well for Nintendo as we originally thought weeks ago before they had the NSO uh, playtest going on. I think that has become Nintendo's focus this week. And you can argue, but yeah, but the playtest is going on the entirety of next week. Yeah, but everything's supposed to be private. I think this week, you know, they expected all the leaks and all the information to get out about that playtest. Next week, you know, it's going to be old news, and I don't think a lot of people are going to be talking about it. So next week could make a lot of sense and could distract people from that playtest as well. Uh, it's also notable that Masahiro Sakurai, uh, he dropped a video this morning, and we don't really know if this is related to the Switch 2, but we assume it is. Uh, Masahiro Sakurai did a 40-minute video uh, today basically just going over uh, how to be a YouTuber and why he, he chose and made the decisions he did, and how he recorded his entire YouTube channel like two and a half years ago, uh, and that's because he was asked to put together a game proposal back in 2021, but the game development really wasn't going to begin until April of 22, so he had some time in there to record all these videos and uh he basically announced today that he's working on a new game and uh he's not going to tell us what the game is but i i do find that to be interesting that he's like hey i had to put together this proposal and you know maybe you'll see the game soon because he, again he's been working on it for two and a half years a lot of people assume it's a new smash bros game uh probably for switch 2 uh, i guess we'll know because if it is a new smash bros game for switch 2 
If it's been in development for two and a half years, theoretically, you could see it in the reveal of the Switch 2. If not, Nintendo might wait to show it off later in 2025 and have it be a 2026 game uh, so they can kind of spread out other big hits because it kind of feels like Nintendo could have almost all their big hits ready to go if they wanted to. And Nintendo does like to sit on games. They do like to sit on things uh, and release them, you know, kind of spread out in a way that makes sense for selling the most units. So anyways, guys, uh, that's what I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this conversation and look and a smidge of new information or at least new speculation with leaks and rumors mixed in on the Nintendo Switch 2, be it the name, be it the color button theory. I find it just really, really... I just have a really, really damn good time talking about Switch 2. It really gets the juices flowing. I get really excited. It's kind of weird that, like, talking about the Switch 2 and sometimes talking about topics we've talked about before that have more evidence now uh, just really gets my juices going and gets me really excited all over again, like really hyped, like we're going to see the Switch 2 soon and we're gonna, it's gonna, all these rumors are going to get proven correct. And one of my favorite things about this console reveal right now is just going back. I think I need to do this in a live stream or on a video. Go back to old rumors on Switch 2 over the last few, couple of years and see how many of them are right and how many of them are wrong. In fact, that might actually be an important thing when determining what's reliable in the future as well. Because like a lot of the stuff that we talk about over the last year was backwards compatibility, the color button theory, the eight inch screen the uh, dock design the magnetic stuff a lot of it's like multiple different sources corroborating different things and if a lot of it ends up being true it's like man all that stuff is going to start to feel super reliable obviously the stuff that hasn't been great really reliable is it will be revealed this time it will be revealed that time technically most of that has just been speculation to be clear a couple of rumors there was a fake rumor about october 10th uh, that was one that was obviously completely debunked. And then uh, all the way back in March, uh, you know, it was supposed to be revealed in March of this year. But then there was that internal delay that some people aren't even sure if that was real. Because look at Nintendo's lineup. That was real. Then what's up with these games? Then I would also counter with, yeah, what's up with these games? Well, none of them are like Nintendo's A-teams. Uh, so these games were probably always going to come to Switch, even if Switch 2 came out this year. Because they're still trying to sell Switch. It's a whole mess, everyone. All right, that's going to do it here. I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. I uh, should join me live tonight around 8 p.m. Central Time, so we'll have a good time. We'll chit-chat up. We'll Q&A it. We'll have some fun. Otherwise, guys, we'll catch you tomorrow for our next video and our podcast tomorrow. Pretty excited for that one. Uh, we'll probably talk a smidge of Switch 2, but we've got to talk about the NSO stuff. That's really the lead topic tomorrow, uh, unless something else crazy happens. And Nintendo decides they want to reveal Switch 2 this week. I don't think it's going to happen. But I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> Catch you in the next video.